Hello and welcome to Labras. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Um, Matt, you gotta zoom out. Yeah, seriously, man. Zoom out. Dude, I like the new TV though. Oh well. Yeah, no, I understand that. Hey, do you like the new TV? It's great. You guys are better looking than the TV too. Aren't we handsome? Anyway, so the good thing about this is, A, we do not have uh, curtains in behind us anymore, and people are complaining, we hate your new set. Boring. And number two, uh, it means that now we can put anything on here. So Wait. if this, you're... This looks right, but there's something still seems wrong. What? Here. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. All right. Anyway, photographs. You have photographed digital cameras, something like that. Go take a picture of yourself and your cat, or uh, your wife, or your cat and your wife. <laughs> and... Uh, and email it to us at uh, feedback at and we'll put it up on the new TV. Okay? Anyway, um, what are we doing today? We're going to talk about power supplies. Every uh, computer has one. Yeah, I know you're saying, <sighs> but you know what? Uh, a lot of people uh, need to upgrade their power supply. You just install that extra hard drive, and you're starting to get a bunch of brownouts, so computer's crashing all of a sudden. Might be time to upgrade. So we're going to show you how to figure out how much you need right. you know, in terms of a wattage rating. Mm -hmm and how to actually take it out and put the new one in. Well, compelling information, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, let's have a look at uh, a message from our sponsor oh, don't first. Don't worry, Andy. We'll get back to spyware real soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll uh, listen for a message from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. So power supplies, um, why on earth would you ever want to change your power supply? Well, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the biggest reasons you'd want to change your power supply is because you've added extra hard drives or you've added a CD burner or something to your system that wasn't in there before and your old power supply may have provided just enough power to power all the components that well, we're currently using. Okay, so, so what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, problems would you experience if, like, say, your power supply was underpowered, for example? If the power supply was underpowered, uh, at worst, uh, it will just stop working properly. Um, but it becomes a little bit more pernicious when you're trying to diagnose it because sometimes it'll be working fine. Pernicious? And, and then, you know, you look it up in the dictionary. Right? <laughs> Dictionary.com. So it'll be working fine, then all of a sudden your second hard drive that will. Pernicious? P E R N I C I O U S. That's pretty good. All right, go on. Sorry. He could yeah. have said anything. You don't know how to spell it. No, I know it's true. You know what I means. have no idea. All right. I use a spell check. Okay. All right. So, um, it can be a little bit more pernicious <laughs> if you've got your system running and say your hard drive, your second hard drive kicks in. Yeah. And, or something else powers up inside your system, starts drawing more power, and then it can just start getting really flaky, and you don't know exactly right. why, because it may be running fine most of the time. So, you, so your hard drive would wind down sometimes, or what? Right, it could be just your system freezes up entirely mm -hmm. because it uh, starts I've seen these, actually. Away. I've seen this a lot. You know, what'll happen is, you know, you'll get you know, random blue screens and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. if you're having power problems or power, low power or intermittent power and that sort of thing. Exactly. Is that, I mean, so if the average user, you know, viewer out there, um, if they're experiencing, like, kind of wild, weird, situations like this, probably something to check, right? It's a possibility, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've added something new into your system, like maybe that new CD burner, or you're plugging in USB things that you weren't plugging in before that maybe draw a lot of power, mm -hmm. you may have been riding the edge before, like just using as much as was available before, and now you've just sort of pushed right over the edge. Right. So what what's going on? See, I think Matt's falling asleep back here. It's very important content, buddy. He's still You're watching. Blocking my shot. I love oh, the yeah. TV. Oh, I, I can't even see it anymore. I know. All it's right, all about sorry. the content, dude. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. You got eight minutes left. Hurry up. All right. All right. Right. Eight minutes. Can you can you do this in eight minutes? Sure. All right. Good. Let's do it. All right. So <clears throat> here's a typical power supply. A typical older power supply. It looks really boring. Really, it's just yeah. it's essentially a box with a fan on the back. Mm -hmm. May have some fans on the other sides. Uh, and power connectors, there. like hi fans. <laughs> okay. It's going to be one of it's going to be one of those episodes. <laughs> Sorry. So what you have in there, this this goes to the back and plugs into the outside world. So right. this uh, the black power cable will plug in there and then into your wall. Yeah. 
On the inside of the machine, it plugs into your motherboard and to all the other components. Okay. So your hard drives. Yeah, there's a lot of components here, right? So there's a lot of power connectors on the motherboard, essentially, right? I mean, I guess this is going to be... This will be for the motherboard. For this the motherboard. is the ATX connector. Okay. And it comes in two different forms. So you'll need to, to know which uh, one you're looking for these days. Uh, the older motherboards from the last few years were 20 pins. And the newer ones for uh, Pentium D and up and some of the new AMD ones. And okay. for servers are 24 pins. It provides just a little bit extra juice and stability. Okay, cool. Um, now, the, the, these guys, of course, would be to power your yeah. uh, optical drives, things like that. Yeah, these Molex uh, connectors plug into the back of your, um, as you said, the, uh, the CD, DVD mm -hmm. drive. Mm -hmm. They'll plug into your hard drives okay. if, if they're old enough. Those new serial ATA connectors have a slightly different connector. Right. And what about the Wii ones? Those tiny ones are for floppies and other uh, things like zip drives or uh, add-ins. And you probably don't want to do that when it's plugged in because it's, uh, it can provide a bit of a jolt. <laughs> Yeah, so <clears throat> now this one is a little bit older, as I mentioned. It doesn't have a lot of connectors. Most mm. of uh, the insides of most new machines is a total spaghetti tangle of cables. Yeah, I know, I noticed that. And it's got some new ones on there that, uh, that you so didn't see. So this is from, well, from what vintage your computer? This is probably about uh, four or five years old. So awesome. even that P3? long ago, P3 system, yeah. right? So th this is the, the major difference is if you're thinking of upgrading, it is not as simple as just simply putting a new motherboard and processor in. Because so, okay, so if you want to upgrade, I mean, you're going to basically going to go to the store and say, listen, I've got, you, first of all, I guess you're going to calculate what exactly, what size this is and how much bigger you're going to get. Right. Would we'll you then show you would, how to do that later. We show, okay, good. Yeah. And then you're going to say to the, uh, the guy that's selling you this, uh, I have a machine of this vintage. Like, uh, you're going to say I have a P3 or I have a P4 or mm -hmm. this is a brand I've, I've got. Is that sort of the instruction you would give to? More or less, yeah. Right? Most of them are, are fairly similar these days. Uh, it, it helps to know they said what type of uh, motherboard you have, mm -hmm. and then they can calculate whether it's 20 or 20 pin, whether you need this one. See, as I was going to mention, this uh, right here, the ATX connector is the one connector you used to have on older boards. Mm -hmm. And now you've actually got two or three different connectors that you use just for power to the motherboard. Right. And we'll show that in a few seconds. Okay, cool. So, but yeah, if, if you're looking for it, know how many watts you want and know what uh, what type of motherboard you're using. Okay, cool. All right, so are we actually going to take this thing out of there? Or? We are. So this, this one is too old, and we're... Sorry, We're man, gonna am, replace I, am that. I ruining your shot here? Yes, but I'm used to it. <laughs> All right. So the power supply uh, usually sticks up top yeah. on, on, the, uh, on the computer case. Sure. It, it, just look for the box that looks like that, and generally you want me to. I mean, it has a fan, right? Have a fan on the back, and then the, the a power, power connector, and it'll have the nest of cables on the other the side. Cable, right. Now, this one actually pulls out the back. So what you want to do when you're taking your power supply out is just follow the cables, disconnect them from the board, so we've got... Uh, this big one here, which you'll uh, pull out. Note that he doesn't have it plugged into the wall. I don't have it plugged into the wall. You <laughs> want to unplug that first. Uh, there's usually little tabs here that you can uh, just yeah. grab to, to release them okay. from the motherboard. Yeah. So there's that one. There is another one which is not plugged in at the moment. So And then I've got it plugged into the CD-ROM drive up there. You'll have another one for the floppy and another one for the hard drives. Okay. Yeah. Maybe one connected to the video card. Oh, yeah, right, because sometimes a video card needs extra power, huh? Right. right. And this one right here pulls out the back. A lot of them actually just drop down over through here. Uh, and then you just ooh, pull the cables out. In some cases, you might actually have little cables like this that are connected to the motherboard to determine how the fan spins up. Right. Now, this is not something that most people are going to bother with, are they? I mean, who? I mean, these sort of, would it be gamers? Like, People that have to upgrade or die, things like that? Yeah, the gamers can do it. Yeah, but modders? just if, if you're thinking of upgrading and you want to do it as a project for enthusiasts, for example, you're, mm. you want to learn more about your system, this might be a good way to do it. Okay. And right. you just find out where all of these things plug in and make sure that you make a note of what's plugged in when you unplug mm -hmm. the thing so you can plug those things back in. Ah, you, yeah, this is a problem. See, and this, this, is, this is the problem that I run into because, I mean, I, uh, I love to tinker inside machines. And I, 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 I can't have to say I'm an amateur you know, tinkerer. I, I know my way around a motherboard, but I gotta say that, you know, I've number of times where I've been in there and moved stuff around and then gone, well, how come my optical drive's not working? It's not powered up, for example. Right. Right? Yeah, or the video card, for example, you forget to do that. And here's the other ones. Uh, sometimes it won't power back up again. Well, most of the time it won't power back up again if you don't get the auxiliary connector or the 12-volt connector. Right. It's right here. I don't even see this mode. This is the 12-volt the connector. It's uh, four pins. Mm -hmm. There's uh, another one out now for the newer boards that has six or eight. Mm. Uh, actually, six goes to the video cards these days, and eight goes to the motherboard. So right. And uh, for some, there are a bunch of uh, Pentium 4 boards 
that came out with an auxiliary connector here, which is like the old school. You used to have two like this that would go together on the old school boards. Right. So uh, hopefully you're not upgrading from that. If you're trying to upgrade to that, you're pretty much out of luck. You'll, you should probably be replacing the entire motherboard. Can you uh, have some fun in the middle of this and go? Sure, why not? While he's doing that, we're going to go to break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll show you how to calculate what you need. Okay. It's Camtasia Studio, the fabulous screencast software from TechSmith. Record what's on your screen, narrate it, and share it online. Create demos, screencasts, training, and more. And rest assured, Camtasia Studio is made by wholesome programmers in Okemos, Michigan, the home of the hardiest geeks around. Quick to learn, easy to use, it's Camtasia Studio. Download your free trial and start screencasting today. <laughs> Well, now we get a, a real good excuse to uh, use the TV. This is one of the advantages to uh, using a great You TV happy now, Matt? Woohoo! Uh, see? All right. He's a happy boy. Okay, so move, get out of the way. Or no, actually, no. Well, we're going we're gonna to do All right, well, you do on there, and I'll look on. All right, so. Woo! i got to work with this every week. Woo! Sorry. All right. All right. Show me. It's important stuff. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> when you're figuring out uh, how much you need in your um, computer, yeah. what kind of wattage you need. Now, um, every power supply has a wattage rating to determine how much power it can actually provide. And it often says along the side, this one right here says 480. I'm not sure whether you can get in that close, but uh, everyone has a, uh, a rating on it right. in general. You know, I know that. Uh, the kind of gray market white box guys, when they you know when they sell you a real bargain yes. device, very often they'll put a very low power uh, power source in here. Right, and there, there's another thing that's worth mentioning about that. That's one of the reasons you want to replace it because they've given you a very low wattage rating. Uh, some of the ones that come in there are very no name, and they may say that they do 250 watts, but realistically it may be about 200. Was oh, it right? So, so it's rated it says 250 watts potentially, but in the lab. Yeah, so it can do it maybe peak. So, okay. yeah. so, so you want to get something that's maybe a little bit more reliable, a better brand name like Intermax or Cooler, uh, Cooler Master, mm -hmm. someone like that. Um, ask around your friends, see which ones they like, and right. check Tom's for the latest ask your mom. Good ones. Ask Mo your mom. Most moms like Intermax. And um, <laughs> so l look for that. And um, sorry, I'm just. So he derails I'm, me. I'm sorry. He completely derails okay, so, me. Okay, uh, so no, I want to ask you a serious question here. This is a serious question. So, oh, I so, bet. <laughs> no, it is. So you can look on the side of your power source, right. and you're going to go, uh, okay, my rating is 250. Now, at that point, 250, is that a, oh, crap, Time it's to too slow, or is, that, to or, or is that a, is, nah, that's all right. Upgrade. So what's um, the range? Like, what's the range? Because um, people are going to, you know, after they see this episode, right. they're going to go into the machine, and they're going to, you know, want to know. Yeah. In general, uh, if you've got an older machine, 250 may be good enough. But if you've got a newer machine, I wouldn't even recommend even starting at anything less than right. 300 or 350. I would so say 250 go, and lower, kaka. Right. Go to go to 400 probably at the very minimum if you've got a modern system. Four, Pentium 4. Pentium 4 or uh, one of the new AMD chips, the right. Athlons. There you go. Okay, good. All right. And then the high end, how, how, I mean, can you buy it? Can you get 1,000 watt? Sure. <laughs> do you, It'll cost you a lot of money probably. Do you need um, one? Um, no. You don't. No, we're going to figure out how much you need. Okay, well, let's, right let's do that. So now it's worth remembering that every single thing inside your system takes up power. It may be a little trickle of power, so five watts here, five watts there, but it all adds up. Right, so, so USB. USB, the fans. motherboard, the fans, okay. the, the little. So we're going to do an inventory have. here of, of, right. of a machine and see what it adds up to. Okay. Right. And so we've gone that. to a uh, site uh, called uh, outervision.com. Got extreme.outervision.com slash PSU calculator dot JSP. Okay. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, but it starts out with a, a base thing. There's nothing in this system right. at all. And Matt, quick gabling. Who's Andy? He makes me laugh. What can I say? <laughs> Sorry. So memorizing right. the URL. Right. So right. we've got uh, 43 watts here to start to up. To start, okay. And uh, you can't really get one that that's, that's that low anyways. So we're going to look over here for system type. We have a single processor system in our okay. case. Yeah. Uh, the CPU. Now, sorry, can I just ask a quick question? Single processor, does that mean include a dual core? Um, single will include the dual core, it yes. Will. Okay. 
Right. So what you want to do is you want to go now down to the CPU listing right below that, mm -hmm. and you've got all of these things. Now, we, we had looked at another one before. It wasn't quite so good. This one is really up to date. It has all the newest processors in here, mm -hmm. and hopefully it will still if you're watching this a year down the road. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like the new Core 2 processors. So we're going to go up here, back up a little bit, and I've got the Core 2 Extreme 6800, which is I what I have. I love one of those. Um, and mm, then CPU Conrad. utilization. Let's pretend that that's 100%. Uh, okay. Um, PCI cards up on the top here while we still have this here. Let's say we have oh, a, a yes. modem so here. So the old 56K modem yeah. is still um, drawing down. We've got a power. network interface card. We've got right. a Sound Blaster card in there. Right. Uh, we have a uh, PCI ID. Now, every time you check one of these boxes, the power requirement's going up, correct? Right. It's, right. Uh, it's, we're now at 143 watts. Okay. Um, so additional PCI card, let's just say I've got a USB and FireWire combo card in there and yep. something else, so we've got two extra cards. Right. Uh, we PCI cards go on the back of a machine, right? Right. Um, and uh, USB, we've got, uh, let's say, three, four devices plugged in because we've got the keyboard, we've got the mouse. Yeah. Printer, scanner. We've got a printer, scanner. They may not all be drawing power, but let's be safe. Yeah. And we've got a FireWire hard yeah, drive. Yeah, because this is thing, right? Because if uh, USB, if you actually add a, a USB hub to one of those connectors, you can add up to 127 devices, correct? Uh, yeah. On one port, right? So, I mean, so that's why you have externally powered USB hubs, but you know, if you're going to use a lot of USB devices, especially through a hub, this will be helpful. Yeah, things that only get their power from USB will draw more power. Right. Uh, but a lot of the other things that are already other, uh, powered by other sources, like a plug on the back, they might not draw so much power. All right. All right, so what we're going to look at, other devices, fan controller, we don't have that. Front bay card reader, we have that. We will say, uh, you have a choice here whether you're overclocking. Um, let's go down a little bit. We've got uh, we've got a couple of big fans on there. All right. One on the front, one just on the back. Just do real quick there, Shawnee, because we're yeah. gonna, otherwise it becomes blah, a longer blah, blah, list. Blah. Yeah. So we're just going to add in a couple of sticks of RAM as well. The ones that uh, really are going to add up here are your hard drives. So, so we have two hard drives in there that adds a little bit. Uh, CD-ROM drive. We have one. Okay. What are we up to now? Um, Okay, we're going to add one DVD. I think we're pretty much done there. So let's just go back up to the top, and we're at 278 watts. Right. And that's that's what is drawing yeah, right, right now. And if you add anything else on top of that, then basically now, you're bigger monitors draw more power. No, because of course, yeah, the monitors will be separate. So you'll have a, a video card in here as well that will be drawing power. Um, so you just just check off all of the right. things in here, and the more that. Uh, more that you add in here, the more it will right. draw. So that'll give you sort of a baseline, and then you, what do you want to add? 50 watts on top of that? Oh, just there to be we safe? go. There's there's our video card, and, and let's just see. I think this is important to do. We're going to put in a, a brand new X1900 oh, yeah, video GT. Cars, you know, they have a tendency of going, is sucking power in a big way. See, that, that put us over the top. Now we're over right. 300 watts. Right. So if you've sense. got a 250 in there, you're way over. Right. Okay. The other thing is, uh, okay. So so then so now I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy a 350 watt. At the very least, the you're going to look for 350. Do you give yourself a margin? I would say if you're going to spend the money on a power supply, go even bigger. So if it says 315 here, go at least 400. A thousand watts. Yeah, maybe you don't need that much. Okay, uh, we're running out of time. So um, anything else? That's about it. That's I think. pretty much it. How to add a power supply to your computer? Reasons why? Um, we'll put that uh, URL in the show notes. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. I did a couple of final messages. Uh, we're putting up a new uh, survey on labrat.tv. I want to ask you a few more questions. So that will be up any minute now uh, by the time you see this. Um, so uh, let us know who you are, what you're up to, and uh, what kind of computers you're going to buy, and how many power supplies you're going to reinstall this year. Enermax, your mom loves it, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> more emails. We love emails. Send us your photos for our TV feedback at labrats.tv. Um, try not to send. 10 megabyte files, please. Send them to Andy at cyberwalker.com. Uh, and of course, we always have to mention the forums, forums.cyberwalker.com. We have combined forums now. And uh, any, any other final thoughts, Power Boy? No, he's done. All right, that's it for us. My name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready?
Hey, I'm Eddie Walker, and welcome to Lab Rats. I'm going to talk about stuff that's very important to me. Bum, boobies, beer. I can't have beer anymore today, so let's just talk about bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. That's my bum. Also some bum. Bye.